All right. I'm going to do the thing. Lock the gates. Welcome to Four Brewers. My name is John Holzer, and as always, I'm joined by... Jason Harris. And Greg Nigel's not here, which we didn't mention on the last episode. He uh, is doing something today, so he couldn't be here. But we are joined by Kyle and Tim from Untapped. Hello again. How you guys hey. doing? Also from the Drinking Socially podcast. Yes, indeed. Um, and today we're doing some beers that uh, Tim brought from, I guess you could say your cellar or just from the your... The cardboard your, box your in the office. Yeah. Uh, do, do people send you beer a lot? Like just out of nowhere? Not as, so I've been asked that since untap started and it's not as much as you would think. And I'm not, I really am not one to go and try and like use untapped to get beer. I've done it a couple times admittedly, Yeah, but I'm not, I just, I don't like doing that. It feels icky. But, um, since we started, <laughs> since we started the podcast and we like the couple of times that we at, like we put shout outs out on the show, we're like, Oh, this sounds really cool. Is anybody out there near this? Like, we'd love to try it. We'll definitely make it like worth your while. Like we'll, we'll do a trade or something. Uh-huh. And then I just started getting inundated with people like, Oh, I don't care. I just want to send you this. Cause I wanted to be on the show. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been really cool. Like it's, it's kind of rad to see that. And I'm like, it's one of those things where like, I'm like, I, you don't have to, you don't feel at all obligated but I'm not going to say no. I do, yeah. I do want to kind of make it like a this for that. Like I want to be able to give, you know, we talk about West Coast stuff all the time and it's like, if you're in a place where you can't get that, I do want to be able to share at least that, some local stuff. That's our big thing, right? It's like we've been doing the show for fuck, four years almost, something like that. And um, it's just like we've, beaten california beer kind of to death right <laughs> and so it's like when someone's like hey i'm in st louis here's a bunch of our cool shit it's like thanks dude like, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that really gives us something different to try something to talk about it's awesome yeah, and that's yeah. usually the the catalyst behind people sending us beers because um we want to like get that perspective mm-hmm. from their area and someone is cool enough to be like yeah i'll send you a box of beer and sometimes it's a few and sometimes it's like 10 <laughs> um there was i think it was two months ago where every episode was like listener beers because yeah. we were just inundated with beers and, yeah and it was like this is awesome we like, didn't quite get that far but i definitely we i think i still have a couple like in my fridge that are waiting it's yeah. it's to the point though where I'm like maybe I should get like a PO box or something that's like not my house so that I'm See, not I'm not I having still to have give out that address. In humanity at this point. Yeah, like, I mean it's you're sending you're it too, to my house. You're too far, man. No one's gonna come out. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of true. They're not gonna be like I'm driving out there to fucking throw an egg at his house. They're like, oh fuck that. I have had eggs thrown at my house though, but you know. Maybe not from other reasons. Yeah. Not from rival podcasts. Maybe because I'm just an <laughs> asshole. From rival podcasts. <laughs> the the the, I'm sorry. That's the actually, beers came down from Texas, and brew, so that's why we're here today. It's, this is we've got an epic beef with you. Sorry, Brewing Network fucking TP'd your house. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I heard that fooder duders thing, and I didn't appreciate it one fucking bit. Yeah, I'm sure we're not even on their radar, but. uh Anyway, uh, so the I first a, beer I met a Brewing Network guy somewhere, and he was really cool. Justin Crowley, I think he was like a like one of their like associates. Dude, oh, okay, because there's Justin, there's the dude with the big fuck off beard, there's the chick that I forgot her name on Instagram. It's so, she's so popular. Um, th- that's the three people I know, and then Jamil, of course, yeah, Dana Chef. But so we're gonna start off with uh, a beer that Tim brought uh, from Dogfish Head. Uh, I put these in a certain order, so yeah, no, this is how good. we're going to drink them, and you will present them as such. All so, right. <laughs> let me just, let me just read <laughs> it, Captain. That fucking rule. Just to make that clear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I should probably start off by saying uh, you were just talking about, oh, do people send you beer? And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I don't like to use yeah. that. I, I used it for this one. I, yeah. I reached out, and I was like, I got to get yeah, this. Yeah, because there was like 300 bottles of this made. Uh, yeah, so, so first Dude, off... Um, I was hyped when I heard about this because I, I love that song. Yeah, and I, when oh, I heard about the name, yes. yeah, I, I love. I was like, that is the best beer name I've ever yeah. heard. So the, the beer is the best ever dark Munich beer out of uh, Milton, um, which is... So details first. It's a 5% five, five percent ABV um, lager. It's considered Munich Dunkel. Um, I'm reading off the uh, screen here. Just straight from untapped, too. Yeah, it's a, a seven <laughs> fifty, so it's a 750 milli, milliliter bottle. And um, it was only released at uh, their Maryland, is it a tap, tap room restaurant or whatever? Uh, the De- Rayabeth Beach? I think so. I'm not sure yeah. exactly. It was only at one of their locations. And I saw it. Because um, they, I, Milton, they have a tasting room also. Maybe so. it was, maybe. I mean, based on the name, maybe that would yeah. be. Uh, yeah. So I, I have like feeds of beer news because I like to, we put articles in our show. And mm-hmm. I'm always like looking at it. And like 90% of them are beer releases. And I just don't, we don't use that. But I saw one. I was like, oh my God. 
that's awesome because um the the name is a parody of a song called the best ever death metal band out of te- um denton out of uh denton, denton. Yeah, yeah denton yeah um which is a song by the mountain goats which is like one of my favorite bands and it's this old school like scratchy recorded on like a click tape recorder deck almost like super super lo-fi yeah. and i heard this name i was like wait a second oh my god that's amazing and so i had to reach out and um i was just like do I know someone there? So I want to give a shout out to Alan Weath um, over at Dogfish. Um, he came through and sent this to me. Got to pull out the untapped card. That is fantastic. Yeah, I was just super stoked. And here's the thing: so it sh- when they shipped it to me, it came with an album, a two a two sided really? two track album. Because apparently um, Sam has, and I I think he has a little side band called the Pain Relievers. The Pain Relievers. Relievers. Oh, Relievers. That yeah. was a yeah. real thing because that was the fake. When they had their TV show, no, they, had a real that, thing. they had that like infamously <laughs> yeah. bad rap video they did. Yeah. So apparently they actually did a cover of the best ever death metal band to this beer. And I'm not, it's, it's pretty, it's not great. Yeah. But. Cause at the Rayabeth beach, uh, brew pub, they always had, it wasn't always, but like, you know, they had bands and stuff and that brew pub was tiny. So if there was a, a band in there, like they're going to be freaking loud well like th- it, this was like him he had like a guy doing like the drum box or whatever that you sit on and um he or no he, the guy was playing guitar and i think sam was singing or i don't know there's a video yeah. of it on youtube okay but it was i saw that and i was like i just th- because of the the nostalgia and the song i was just like i have to get this and i've been holding on to it for a little bit and well cool like thanks for place. thanks for bringing it man that's that's awesome and i think it said it was like bottle one 40 something it is 210 of oh, 210 okay still out of 300 bottles that's that's pretty dope that rules we should have done a music cue <laughs> yeah well, dropping the ball on that one <laughs> you fucked it Josh. you can't do everything jason <laughs> all right i'll just play it on my phone into the mic it actually works pretty well <laughs> just don't don't get us banned from twitch come on <laughs> Twitch just cuts the music out. That's true. Like, yeah, they'll keep yeah, the rest yeah. of the podcast. Like, <laughs> it works great. I feel like that's that wasn't even on a major though, right? That fucking album. I don't think we're gonna get. Oh yeah, well, it was on All Hail West Texas. Yeah, which that was like. like I think it's still popular enough to where we're you're not gonna. Well, it, they did a re a re release of it. Uh, so okay, it, it's come back up. Did you listen to the podcast they did? No. Dude, the uh, the guy from Welcome to Night Vale did uh, a podcast called I Only Listen to the Mountain Goats. Oh, and, I've heard of that. And they go through each episode uh, is about a song from All Hail West Texas. and They, they did a cover album uh, yeah. with uh, different artists that were all the songs from that. Yeah, so yeah, every episode they sit and discuss the song and oh, kind of how it was okay, made. Okay, I'm going to go and back. Then, and then they play the cover at the end and they talk to the artist and they're like, what did, What was your take on okay, it? Okay, now I know. I've got to go back and listen to all this. It was stuff. really good. And I'm not like a Mountain Goat super fan. I'm like a casual Mountain Goat sure. fan and I really enjoyed it. So, okay. Yeah. I, I got into them right at like the perfect time for a bunch of things coming together and I, I've trailed off with like the last two albums or so but there was there's a sweet spot between like all hail west texas sunset tree and heretic pride those are three albums and those those are like a core for me sorry i'm i'm, 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 gonna, be, I'm gonna be the guy who's I just never heard one this. of the songs well, yeah <laughs> i i've heard the song because jason made me listen to it i literally uh, watched cause I, I would just because i love that song yeah i would go <laughs> no. get tickets i would get tickets literally anytime they were in town and i i read he wrote a he wrote a couple books that i actually i read one of them and yeah i got wow, i went a little super hardcore yeah I, well we went to a reading like he he came and did like a reading at one of the bookshops like, like the old for your future no, no like reading from his book <laughs> oh, <laughs> like a anyway i i nerded out hard for a while it was it was pretty it was pretty so it, this beer yeah. is like totally ready like this is this beer was made for tim basically you, you guys i unlocked a badge which which one? Actually, one I've never gotten before. Should we bring the hazy bale? Which is pretty <laughs> uncommon. <laughs> it's the badge bale. Uh, I got the take a dunk badge, which I oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who named? That? Hey, listen. Uh, we're, if we're if we're looking for opportunities to maybe rename a couple of these, I'm taking suggestions Wait, now. Is it really? It's called take a dunk. Yeah, it's for uh, dunkles. dunkles? Yeah. No, <laughs> that's rough. It, you That's... should make a badge called my creepy dunkle. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Uh, it is uncommon for me to get a level one badge, though, so I'm pretty hype on yeah, that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Did you check into... Well, that sounded dunkle. Shiner wasn't a dunkle. That's just a box. That was a box. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, of course, in dogfish tradition, this beer is made with some slightly unique things. It's made with uh, black malt from Chile in... Uh, 
let's see, red rye crystal malt and abruzzi rye. So, uh, and corn grits, of course. Mm. Why not? I mean, Dogfish Head is definitely one of those older school breweries that was innovating first and foremost, like even with their, their pumpkin beer, pumpkin ale. Like it was like, I put pumpkin in a beer and won a contest. I'm kind of yeah. sad. I'm kind of yep. sad they never distributed the um, worker spit beer from that show they did for a while there. Oh, yeah. The, the, uh, Chicha. Chicha. Because that yeah. totally Chicha would beer. have gone through the FDA, no problem. Yeah, it's fine. It's boiled and sanitized. <laughs> it does, like You could take a shit in a beer. As long Kyle, as you boil it, it's going to be fine. Sorry, you could take a dunk? You could take a dunk <laughs> in a beer. <laughs> Kyle in the chat said, uh, red, red rye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which I appreciated. Had to give that one some love. Um. Yeah, dogfish head's weird for the sake of weird thing. Like, I'm coming back around on it. I was so kind of, I. I was kind of like, all right, dogfish, I've had enough. But they stopped doing those ancient ales beers, which is good. And now I'm just kind of like, you just keep being weird, dogfish. I like it. But the, someone's got the, to. They're like branching out, not to doing collaborations with other brewers, but like music collaborations. Uh, and like, they pretty much started that. I yeah. think like, bitches brew and the Deltron was it. They, I, I, think I, I got you a couple bottles of Bitches Brew from back in the day when they did it came the great. Out. Didn't they just do a Grateful oh, yeah? Dead thing? Yeah, I did. I, I gave you that. like two. No, I, you never did. I've never had Bitches Brew. Hmm? Or you gave me one and I don't remember it. Maybe. I think I gave you two. Fuck, I don't remember that. Yeah. Now I feel like an I asshole. I think I still have one if you want one. It's usually, <laughs> so when we're going through the show, Sorry. it's usually it's like, okay. did John give this to me or not? And that's oh, like yeah. the, that's the question that Tim has to kind of mull over in his head for a little bit. And then he'll, he'll either find out whether, he, whether you did or not, but it's... Huh. It's it's. I still have a couple. Go-to. I still have a couple of bottles from the first time you you were clearing your closet out, and you're like, "Oh, I don't want this anymore. Oh, I don't can't want be good." And you gave it to me. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh. Your your brewery stash. Yeah, <laughs> something God. something's coming. That's over. all brewery beer. Yeah. Like, yeah. dude. It's, yep. it's, it's, oh, I've seen it. Yeah. Oh. So, well, Kyle, to your yeah. point though, it, uh, Dogfish is kind of they still they still have like they have their flagships, they have their weird, and they kind of branched out into trying to be a little more mass market with the sequential and now the locale. Um, the locale that they just put out. So it seems like they're, they've, they're trying to get into that health conscious market a little bit too. I could see, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a marketing angle, you know, the, the sequence, it's, it's a nice, easy drinking goza. And I mean, it's the, good. Yeah. We've said this a few times on the show, but the last couple of years, they seem like more like a brewery that I'll look at where for a while I just written them off. I was just like, okay, they haven't, they don't release anything worth a goddamn anymore. So, but then they they really seem like they've pulled back to where they're doing kind of interesting stuff again, I think. Well, it's also nice that the beers are coming in six-pack form rather than, like, bombers or mm-hmm. 750s. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. the $15 750 I'm kind of over. Yeah, because, <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to... Especially since stores nowadays break up the... the bo- I mean, maybe not so much with Dogfish, but, like, with, like, the hazy releases and stuff. Uh, bottle shops will break up the four-packs, and, and I mean, they're making more money because they're jacking up the price, like, a dollar or two per can. But still, you're not buying an entire four pack, and you know, oh, this sucks. Well, I got three left. I guess I even that just... Grateful Dead beer that I posted is a six pack. I was right; they did a Grateful Dead beer. Yeah, and the seventy five minute IPA. That's a beer that was only brewed in Rehoboth Beach. Uh, I, I think it's a blend um, of sixty and ninety. Um, but that's a beer that was only local to Dogfish Head, and that's in six packs mm-hmm. now, which is cool to see because that's a pretty unique beer. What was um, what was the the one you gave me, Kyle? Um, the the night night juice. Uh, higher math. Higher math. Yeah, I still by, have, I still have that in the office. Yeah, it's one of their uh, like yield caps, the the big bright green cap on the top. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and it's it, it's supposed to be sort of like a cherry chocolate uh, high ABV seven, 17, 18, I think it's the same cap that's on worldwide stout, basically. Yeah, in, in like uh, the uh, one hundred twenty minute. Yes, yeah. exactly. And Drink I think with that's caution. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a good look. I mean, the fact that they also bottle those in not again, like you said, 22, 22 ounces. Um, it, it's a nice, you know, 11, 12 ounce bottle that I can maybe, you know, just have over dinner or something. It's far more drinkable than, uh, some of these others that I'm just like, I can't like this, this super heavy beer is going to be in my fridge forever. I'm not, I'm never going to get to it until mm-hmm. somebody comes over. I have yeah. a really, I have a really interesting question. If only 300 bottles of this were made, how do we have 720 GABF. So oh, did they pour it there? That's the thing. Uh, most of the folks that I am friends with on Untapped have had this at GABF. And I I guess they were pouring it from, not from bottles, <laughs> huh. you know, whatever was left over yeah. um, after bottling. So They're actually really good about bringing, like, 
cool stuff to festivals. Whenever I've seen them show up, they're like, and we made a one-off just for this. Like, right. Well, they get an end cap. Like, they pay for that end cap at JBF, and they, like, totally take advantage of it. And mm. there's, uh, for a brewery as old, quote-unquote, as Dogfish Head, to have the line that they always have at JBF is pretty damn cool. Because mm-hmm. Stone also gets an end cap, and they get a pretty decent crowd, but not like Dogfish Head. Like, and Sam's always back there the first night of JBF. Oh, That's yeah. the appeal, right? You're like, oh, Sam's there, and he's just like, oh, man, thanks for drinking He'll my talk beer. to you as long as you want, and he'll take, he'll do whatever you want. As long, as long as you're like having a good time and drinking his beer, he doesn't care. He's such a nice guy. I love Sam. He's great. He seems nice. He's nice. He's I haven't nice. met him. <laughs> this beer is pretty fantastic, I got to say. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. Um, I think it actually uh, is nice to see Dogfish not going out of their way to make something that's going to like be weird like as far as the beer goes. For it the sake like of being weird. Yeah, it feels like a, it's a pretty traditional dunkel. Like it, it's. I mean, got the, a nice nose. It it drinks great from the ingredients. They played with it a bit, obviously, but it, it doesn't taste like they went way out of the out of the kind of rails of the style. Yeah, yeah. They they say it's a uh, it's got a nutty character, and I mean they they nailed that nut character. I, like I said, the Dunkelweiss style <clears throat> or uh, Munich Dunkel is 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 a pretty. I'm not going to say hard beer to brew, but um, to nail the style is, I think, pretty difficult, and this this nails it. To be honest, I don't know that I've had a lot of these. That's probably why I just got the bed. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, I, I just checked in, and I that was I earned that one as well. I'm, yeah. Which yeah. which badge was that? The take a dunk. <laughs> I can't. I can't <laughs> hear it's, it. It's got a uh, diving board and like um. I, I think it's a beer jumping into a pool. Yeah. I'm now. I'm. I'm really desperate to find out who actually named that. Now I gotta <laughs> dig through my. So who who would have made that art for that badge? Uh, uh would, do who who has it? I have to see it to know the style. Here. Um. Uh, that was Dave. So. Um, we, so we do a few different things depending on what it is. If it's like a, a core holiday badge or if it's part of our, a core, uh, part of the core badge releases that we do where there's a pack of them. Mm-hmm. Um, we either have uh, a friend of mine that we contract to or, uh, somebody internally, depending on schedules. If we need to get it out pretty fast, we have someone that we uh, hire out and it's a friend of mine. Actually my, my ex boss, uh, my first design job, um, his name's Dave, uh, Brzezowski. Uh, he has his own design studio, blue spark studios. And, um, he does. He did quite a few of them for us over the years. Mm-hmm. That's cool. You basically, it's like we have a voting. So there's a voting system. Um, I can't remember the exact URL for it. <laughs> if you scroll down the page, the, it's, the, there's it's a badge footer voting somewhere. Footer, yeah. But anyway, we, people can submit badges and they can vote up on them. Kind of. I like, didn't know that. Yeah, kind of like Reddit style. And so huh. we we go through that and basically pull people. Well, you can name it what it is and kind of give like a reason why. And so we basically we go from that and this is like hey dave here's the name and like um what it's about and like a mild description and he just has to go and like sketch from there okay but it, admittedly so there's the the suggestions can be hit or miss from people well it, it really <laughs> sorry i was waiting for that probably the pizza <laughs> oh. <clears throat> cutie Oh, it's so cool. I'm so glad that it's so glad that it's actually good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the dogfish is actually pretty hit. Like they're they're not hit or miss. I wouldn't even describe them as hit or miss. I'm like, all right, I'll check some out if they put something out new. Like they, they use weird ingredients, but not to excess. Yeah. Like sequench, you know, it's got kind of interesting. Black stuff. limes and sea salt or whatever. Yeah, stuff that you wouldn't see in most other like random gozes that people put out but it's still good and not like like oh weird why does it taste like cardamom you know like oh <laughs> so i the first the first beer that back and this was early i don't know i feel like should we wait but or, or uh, maybe not because it's negative the first uh first beer i ever drain poured was a dogfish head and it was uh palo santo the ancient ales beers too were pretty fucking bad they're just like oh look we found some historical shit and we made a terrible beer with it thanks for the 18 dollars i'm like god damn it (laughs) granted now maybe if i tried it now after kind of having more uh of an expanded palette on beer it might be different but i remember pouring that and be like what the fuck is this and Mm -hmm. i was just like nope yeah we did palo santo on the show and i remember it being like uh 
Was that the one that has like a ton of wood in it? It was. It's it's held in the Palo Santo um, vat, yeah. a vat made of the Palo Santo wood. That they have that, and they have a cedar beer that are just like so much wood. And cedar, you you can tell why people don't use it in beer. It's like way way too powerful for freaking. Uh... Oh, I gave Palo Santo a four when I had it at some point, but I think we did it on the show. Whether or not this goes in the show, I don't know. John will figure it out. 12% brown ale. Yow. Betty's going to take a break. What was that? Betty's going to take a break. Oh, okay. And the pizza is here, by the way. So Yay. So where were we? We were talking about the badge artwork. Um, oh, and the voting. And the badge voting. Um, oh, I was going to say something about that. Yeah, I was going to... I mean, we take suggestions for for what... You know, they're screened to a degree. and then... they, they are, and, and I think Untapped is so community-driven, both like our, our entire beer database is, and I think it's only fair to also make the badges that folks want to earn on, on the service also sort of community generated to a degree. Obviously we don't want to saturate the badge earning process to the point where you're like, this is the 54th level of middle of the road, I guess again, like that's, (laughs) it's really unfortunate. So what, I mean to, to try and curb that a little bit, we've introduced retroactive badges so that any new badges that you, that we introduce as a service, you'll earn for your entire history of Untapped. So, okay, yeah. any any check ins from 2011 that you had, you know, a Munich Dunkel, and then we add the, you know, the take new the, the, the Take a Dunk badge, <laughs> uh, you'll earn your entire history of that beer towards that you know, bad badge level. It's one of those things where in the moment when we made it, it didn't sound bad. And now that the, I'm hearing, image, listen. Uh, now pod, that I'm hearing the badge name I, now, I'm, okay. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> keep the badge. I think it's great. Oh no, I like no, the name. No, it's great. But it's just funny to sit here with the two guys from Untapped and like, it's called Take a Dunk, really, guys. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where, you're like, when you did it, like that was that's an old one too. Like we did that a year plus ago, mm-hmm. and at the time, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, that's fun. We can make a pool theme out of it. Now, now thinking back, like. Oh wait a minute! And we're we're in you sort of honestly an audit- didn't think about no. Take a dump. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna blame Tim for this one. But you can, listen, it's a, it's we're on a like audio medium, and so saying the words yeah. definitely have a certain vibe. When right. you read it in your head, looking at the image though, I mean, it, duh, it's sort of like a it makes sense. It's a it's got like trunks on the bottle does, and it's jumping in the pool. Sure, I mean, I get yeah. it, but it, it's. <laughs> It's, it's it's funny. Yeah. It's really funny though. That's good. So uh, this inspired me to kind of like just I had the page up when I was pulling that screen cap, and I didn't know that I got this badge. But this is I just gonna give you guys a shout out because this thing fucking rules. Uh, I got this when I was at some a bar, so I probably didn't even look. Oh, but Silence of the Lambics. Okay, so that's <laughs> yeah. a shout out to um, our internal designer um, back in uh, Wilmington, Ryan Payne. Uh, he he designed that one. That one's fun. I just glanced that's through cool and badge. I was like, that's funny. I yeah, like that. that was pretty, that was one of those things where like we, we saw the name and like everybody kind of instantly knew what to do, but he like brought it to life and mm-hmm. it was super good. Yeah. 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 That one's cool. So what else do we have beer wise guys? We've had this dogfish uh, head beer. We we went for seconds while we were on a bit of a break. Yeah. What? The dog dogfish beer was, was great. Um, it depends on how you guys run. It's the, the it's fine folks at Dogfish. One of the few beers that you're not mad that it's in a 750. You're like, actually, we'll have more of that. Yeah, I'd love to have more <laughs> of that beer. Yeah. Um, and we next. won't. <laughs> and it's a limited beer. <laughs> and it's gone. We'll never see again. Uh, up next is a beer from a brewery that I actually heard about first on Drinking Socially, the Untapped podcast, from Adroit Theory. Um, this is a, a hazy uh, beer. Uh, you guys talked about on this episode uh, how this brewery, like, they brew a beer and then they subcategorize the beer and then they make a different variant and subcategorize that. And it's this whole weird thing. It, it's almost like naming a comic book, right? Where you've got like an issue or you've got sort of like the main run and then you've got what universe that's in. And then you've got the issue of that universe. Right. And and then you've got sort of like the flavor or like which character they decided to to highlight for that particular one. It's a very strange 
uh, naming category and the way yeah. that they do that. But yeah, so this one's AK bracket Silent Warrior Edition and bracket parentheses Ghost Six Five Three. So it doesn't really tell you anything about the beer, <laughs> no. really. I mean, <laughs> and and. I, it's really kind of hit and miss these days where I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, you know, whatever your brewery name, Brown Ale, that, that tells me a lot when I'm ordering from the bar and I've never been to your, your brewery before. But if I'm getting this in like a Tavor shipment or I'm just, that's exactly where we both got it from. If okay. I'm, if I'm able to read like a description about it and, or look on untapped and see what other folks thought about it and maybe see some flavor notes and stuff, the, the name absolutely doesn't matter anymore. I mean, I have, I have an entire category of beers that I have, I do for quote unquote research on untapped that are super, super long and almost like pushing the boundaries of the character limit on, uh, untapped and, it it definitely is. Uh, You're like, thanks, evil twin. I we got a we got a code around that one now. <laughs> I, I just can't. The problem with beers like that, though, is that I just can't remember if I had them or not. So obviously, I have to like externalize and get a tool and make sure that I'm checking back to see what ve- what edition and what ghost I had. Of, yeah, so of this beer. I I kind of like that. On on one hand, like it makes for a really like kind of obscure name and it's not memorable. Like I had the AK beer. But then you could say, well, I had the Silent Warrior edition in this one, and six five three was good. But if you had six five two, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's kind of like four hundred nine, right? Like Formula four hundred nine is the four hundred ninth time that they f- tried to figure out a formula, right? To you know, also clean your kitchen or whatever. Yes, a, a couple times you guys mentioned Tavor. Do you guys like have a relation to that, or just happen to be used Tavor? So I guess on an official on an official level, Tavor has advertised through untapped before with our promotions but on an unofficial side we're kyle used it previously he turned me onto it and it just became a fucking addiction yeah so like we can let's give them some free ad because i don't i'm not familiar i just looked it up it's clearly some okay sort so of this advertising is worth thousands of dollars by the <laughs> that's way that's right so. yeah. So so in, that there are the literally dozens of customers that they're going to get. Well, the, the, so you have you have beer of the month clubs, right? right and right. You, you subscribe to that, and they pick you beers, and they send it to you. That usually garbage. Y- y- sure, hit or miss. Tavor is more of a. Um, they, so the, it's almost like a Kickstarter version of that, where you see the project, you see the beer that's available, and you say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I'll take one right. or so, two or so three." So every of those. every day, it's it's app based. They also do emails, which I tried to do. Anyway, so it's app-based. Um, you download it, you log in, and every day they post probably like, I don't know, either anywhere between like two to four different beers that they have, and you get a push notification. They have some witty stuff. They write a description, and then you can choose how many you want to buy, and you just buy it, and it charges you there for that beer, and then it goes into a crate where you can choose the date at which your sh- uh, your crate ships. So it just kind of sits on the shelf there. And then, like at the end of the month, then all the sh- shit you bought, they gets ship it. shipped to you. Yeah. Uh, and for like fourteen ninety five or something. Yeah, it's some, a, fl- it's a flat, flat rate flat for rate. for the whatever number of beers you bought. Yeah, hmm. and you just basically and the, here's the thing though, they get really good stuff from all over the place, things that I wouldn't normally get, and their prices seem to me at least pretty low or decent. And uh, uh, there's like this massive FOMO. I'll get a push notification for a while there. I went, I went off the rails. I was like, push notification. Oh, this sounds great. Bye. And it's that, it's that easy. Huh. And well, it, okay. it's, it's like you can't get Anchorage here. You can't get um, still certain still waters. You know, collaborations, stuff like that. It, it it does feel very exclusive. And so, I mean, Tim mentioned the fear of missing out on oh, that. Oh yeah, is, it's real. I, I might have to check that. out. I deleted. It I kind of cool. If you do, hit me up because I want the referral. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> I call it. Honestly, I probably two, three. <laughs> I, I got rid of all my beer clubs except one, so I can waste money on beer a little well, bit. The thing and the um, I literally I had to delete the app from my phone. Same. <laughs> I, wow. I had to delete yeah, the same. app. Same. Damn. Yeah. It's just because it's kind of crazy. Well, <laughs> see, I've actually kind of gone in my beer journey. I've kind of gone all the way the other way where I'm just like, I don't know. I'll just buy a few six packs of the shit I like and then I fucking bounce. And so like my like giant money wasting, like I'll buy one of everything trips to the store of kind of, I'm, I'm like, eh, I don't do that that much. I'm like, yeah. oh, but if they have a bunch of out of market shit, maybe I'll try some. Stuff. Yeah. And they, it and, fun. and it's, I mean, I can, I'm actually curious now what's in my crate right now waiting to, uh, waiting to come. I mean, it's sort of like having a friend that lives in another city who's willing to just pack up random stuff for you, send one-offs, and and then ship it out to you for a flat rate. It's huh. it's pretty great. Um, one of the things I think that that really sold it for me, they started doing recently, where you can get a whole bunch of cellared stuff, get you know some high ABV stuff, 
um, some things that are bottle conditioned, those can sit in their warehouse for as long as you want. You don't need to have those sent to you, mm-hmm. but you can then buy what they call like an IPA box, which is a bunch of fresh stuff just packaged a couple days ago. As soon as you buy one of those packages, they'll ship your entire crate for one low fee. I sound like a commercial right now, but it's it, it makes getting a whole bunch of cellar stuff and sours over time great because i'm waiting for the fresh stuff and then it ships right away yeah yeah. so it it, you don't run into that problem where you're going to have a whole bunch of you know four month old five month old beers that are just sitting waiting to be shipped out you're like oh i forgot my crate like it it, it just instantly ships out yeah i currently have um i have two cans of blissful ignorance from lupulin brewing um, I have a four pack from the Mad Tree Brewing. They did it. They Tivor posted a like four different coffee variants of the same beer. Yes, I got that. I as got well. that as well. Yep. Um, I have uh, Origin <laughs> Origin Double IPA from Anchorage. I think that was another Anchorage Monkish collab. Yeah. So that's in there, and then don't call it Hotlanta from Monday Night and Abusive Powder Citra from Destination Unknown. Nice. And those that are all just like sitting. A fun mix. They'll eventually ship, and it's cool because it's like singles, or you can buy more than one, and those are like. You're looking at like um, probably five bucks uh, a sixteen ounce. So I mean, maybe it's a little more, but like these are things that I wouldn't normally get. So I'm looks okay. Like, looks like it's, Jason's shows for the next session just got a little easier. There you go. <laughs> well, see, the the thing is, this this doesn't replace like a local bottle shop sure. for me either. It it is it is very much about getting out of market stuff. Well, and then that's I'll, that's the whole appeal of it, right? Yeah. yeah, and then I then I s- sort of split it between whatever you know, whatever bottle logic just canned, and you know, like that kind it's of. It's kind stuff. of some of the benefit of trading without having to deal with trading. Right? <laughs> you don't yes, have, you yes. don't have to send stuff back; you just have to pay for it. That's a big thing. Or deal I'm really with, bad like, with that. Yeah, I, people shipping it and like not the best conditions, <laughs> or yeah. they lied about something. Or, it it, it yeah. show it shows up in a nice nice box, um, pretty solid. The only downside is for at least for me, I have terrible luck meeting gold they think they ship golden state overnight oh yeah and i, I have I hear terrible you, luck connecting with them i did i got i did one order from uh what's what's the bottle shop in san diego right off uh 78 um, oh, I know holiday wine cellar uh i did a, 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 a I ordered beers you can order beers from them online mm-hmm. and they'll ship them next day and uh this is before yvonne works worked from home and they came like four times and i was never here like we just weren't here oh i had a and box they, return they come at noon and then, like, they would call and be like, we have a box of beer for you. I'm like, yeah, I'm not there. Like, can you deliver it at 6 o'clock at night? No, it's too late. And they just sent it back to Holiday, and then I got my money refunded. Yeah, that, I never got my beer. I, I had that happen. I missed I missed Golden State three times. They sent it back to Tavor. But Tavor contacted me because they got, like, the return notice. And I guess midway back, they're like, no, turn it around. Send it back to this new address. So I sent it to a <laughs> friend of mine. Yeah. But it was just like such a mess. You have to sign mess. for it, right? Yeah, because it's, it's alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. Stone Brewing Company is the same way. They, they got to sign for everything. Yeah. And right. Usually if it gets sent back, I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's stone. But so, then we got the Metallica thing, and I was like, oh, I'm so glad you were here, Yvonne, because this is dope. Yeah. But, yeah. So how about the beer? Okay, so this was bottled on August. Yeah. Uh, August 1st, 2018. Oops. Keeping that in mind, this still is a pretty fantastic beer. It's, like, for me on the nose, it comes off kind of like a Saison. Almost, it's got like a a, a spicier kind of uh, Belgian ish kind of character, and it's very well carbonated. I don't know if that's the o- on the- purpose or because of the time it's spent in the bottle. But uh, first impression was, oh, this is kind of coming off like a saison. So the carbonation actually, is, I'm not a huge fan of it. It feels yeah. over bubbly to me, like like a fizzy soda sort of like bubble. I have a feeling that maybe this was uh, too. had had a, a bit too much residual sugar and yeast, and it's it's a it's a New England IPA, uh, right? So you're going to have that leftover yeast and suspension and mm-hmm. leftover sugars. It'll probably chew through those Keep sugars. You, you guys talked about how they had kind of the weird naming their description. I'm looking at the description of the beer, and the first half is just like, oh, it's got orchard and pine and bittering. It's like, oh, that's cute, and then it's got just like random comic book shit where it's just like oh yeah forged by terror and steel oh yeah that's a mechanized warrior hunts his prey menacing, menacing focus <laughs> <laughs> breath aligned with intent a perfect assassin i do like that they have the food pairings which is yeah they've fun. got uh for food red curry braised conch and dumplings mm. uh cheese is a- a- applebee's <laughs> Applebee's, Applebee, Applebee's Chesh- Cheshire, mm-hmm. I don't know. Cheshire, mm-hmm. uh, and cigar is uh, Fuente Fuente Opus X. 
Do they have like a storyline you can follow somewhere where all this shit makes sense? That would be interesting. <laughs> it's like a whole like I, uh, killing Cambria kind of. Kind oh of deal. god, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah, that was exactly <laughs> that what I was going. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's but, a, that's uh, a throwback I, for the carbonation. Getting back to that, uh, I think the benefit to what I'm assuming is more. Um, carbonation because of the residual yeast and sugars is that it didn't oxidize because like mm. it chewed through all that stuff and oxygen if yeast is still fermenting well yeast likes oxygen and so it'll it, suck up that oxygen and ferment and so the, you know I it, it kind of held the beer up over time being a little bit prickly i think helps it um not be just like a lot of the new england ipas will kind of they're sit, flat. Sit rough on your palate or exactly. like almost kind of like they linger in a weird way. And the prickliness of this beer helps it kind of clean up after itself and get yeah. out of the way. Yep. I mean, you can tell that it's a New England style IPA. Um, but again, the the weird kind of odd Belgian nose I get and that prickliness makes me think otherwise. But it's it's a great beer. I, I mean, especially for being from August. I mean, it, it's surprisingly good. So, yeah, for six months old, this is a really solid. Idea. I'd be interested in trying this super fresh to see what the difference would be. Yeah, but, I imagine uh, there's a lot bigger aroma for a hashtag Team Old IPA. This is holding <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. Good old stuff. IPA is bad. Well, it's a it's a Joe I know thing, but it's bad. It, the idea is bad. And you should feel bad. <laughs> it's a well. It's, okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying. So far, Team Old IPA is uh, coming through. This is pretty good. So moving on to the next beer, uh, we're going to shift gears here and go to a sour beer. This is from High Water Brewing, which High Water, I think, is in my uh, world known for their campfire stout. Oh, I think. yeah, yeah. It's a really good, like, wood-smoked beer. Uh, they Oregon? Um, San Jose. I, really? Okay. I believe. Hold on. I had it on here. Yep, San Jose, California. Interesting. When I was in San Jose a couple years ago, I was like, God damn, there's no beer around here. There's a lot of beer like an hour away. But there's like right around, or I was right outside San Jose in like Fremont. I was like, God damn, this area blows. Actually, uh, on Untapped, it says Stockton. But does it say San Jose on the bottle? It does. Oh, someone needs to update that. Uh, Maybe I should. It could be. Or they're contract brewing it out of, yeah, fucking, that or out of Gordon Beers. Yeah, the, there there are there are a couple of uh, places down there that do uh, a lot of barrel aged stuff and sours. Um, I can't remember Ooh. specifically. Uh, Almanac may be one of the places that Oof. they've got a barrel house down there. Um, but the the whole peninsula area now in the Bay Area has kind of come up. I think in they've got field work on that side now. They've got uh, alpha acid. Um, there's a lot of a lot of outdoorsy type places in that area now. I can see um, that. But it's, yeah, I <laughs> we've been to field work weirdly in Sacramento only, though not yeah. the actual. Oh main yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. When we've been up there for the summit, they mm-hmm. they have a tasting room in Sacramento. So the only details I found on uh, Untapped for this beer, um, actually, it's not even on Untapped. Uh, the details I found off Wait, the bottle, what? what were that it's it's uh, on there. I sent you the link. I know, and I well, <laughs> I didn't say <laughs> the beer out. wasn't on there. Uh, the, oh. the details Got for the, the beer, there's no like description on there. I'm not blaming you, man. It's okay, okay, just making sure. Um, uh, it's aged in wine barrels, so that's all we know about it. Twelve month. Oh shit! Hold on. And reading the Google summary. Oh wow, that smells jammy. Oh, uh, violet or blue is a twelve month barrel aged sour beer with violet flowers, ripe boysenberries, and orris root. The delicate floral sweetness of violets and orris root lingers gently amid the fragrant and luscious tang of the juicy boysenberries. What is orris root? That's that really popular brewery right now. Oh, right. Orris, orris, orris aged ales. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else. Mm. Do, do, do. <laughs> Wonderfully tart, thirst quenching beer <laughs> brimming with fruit. An orris root is a boop, 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 boop. That's where I'm at googling what the fucking orris root is. A term used for roots of iris and oh, to of a kind of iris. The most valued component of orris root is oil of orris, a yellow white mass. Some metastic acid. Yeah, this bro. is getting deep. Yeah, um, this is I'm Kyling right now. It's, yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting way too deep. <laughs> it's used me. for potpourri. Oh, great. according to Wikipedia. So okay. this beer is made with potpourri. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. It's 
I tried to bring a good game and I'm failing. <laughs> you brought the, a potpourri beer. The color is amazing, though. It's really nice. It actually smells really good. Yeah, it's a nice, um, um, like, like a, blonde pink, like purple. I'd say pinkish purple. It's a little, um, it's a little cloudy, murky looking. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, this it is, smells super tart. Um, yeah, it smells like a very tart, very fruity, like kind of what I expect when I hear sour right now these days. It smells jammy. Like it smells like jam on toast for me Mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, I get a little bit of a, the malt character coming through Mm. too. It's Um, a bit more mellow than I'd expect from the aroma. When I smell it, I expect just acid, like super acidic kind of sour burn. And it seems a little more mellow than that. It's It's, hitting the sides of my tongue pretty good. (laughs) Mm. Well, it doesn't Mm. have a burn Mm, necessarily, but it definitely like you feel it like in your jaw. for sure. Yeah. Uh, and the the taste follows the aroma, like the the jam aspect, like that that big fruit, like um, fleshy character. Comes I really through. like the flavor of it, though. Actually, yeah. um, it's nice for being. It's it's on the far end of how like acidic I'll like a sour to be. Sure, but um, um, the flavor is really good. It's not. It's not like. It's not like a sucking on a warhead or anything. But it, it's more. It's a lot more of the fruit, um, like a fruit citrus tart to me yeah uh, probably the blazonberries it's, it's an acidic bite for sure um and you can feel it but again the, if if the fruit character were less jammy if it were less like fleshy fruit then it would be like too thin and like kind of one-dimensional it's, the floral like that. stuff is not showing through on the nose or mm-hmm. the flavor at no all. Like, I, that's what i'm surprised about that it's it doesn't have that like potpourri we, we keep saying potpourri it's got a potpourri look but other than that i don't get a whole lot of that flowery yeah. I'm, wrong, I'm wrong for you saying know. it's a potpourri. It's not a potpourri <laughs> beer. It's like I can see why they pick this element that is a key component of potpourri because, like, it it works, right? It's, yeah. Oh, it's a sour beer. It's made with fruit, and maybe we'll have a little of a floral potpourri thing too. But, um, yeah, it's not coming through at all. Which, honestly, beers that do smell like potpourri, I don't like. Like, it's it's just too. It's like floral to the next level, and I don't like it. It's it's too much. Yeah, I'd be interesting to. I'd be interested to hear what the people brewing the beer, like what the goal was with those, those notes, were they supposed to be aromatics or are they mm-hmm. just like, I'm curious what the goal with the, the different ingredients was like what they were trying to add to the beer with that. I would assume it's aromatics. Like you don't want to taste flowers. You know what I mean? Like hibiscus, I think is one of those flowers that when you use, when you use it in beer, you can kind of taste it too. And it's kind of off putting, um, but you think often it's an aroma for, thing. for color too. I think you're getting a lot of color probably from the actual berries that are in here, yeah, and, and yeah. a lot less of the um, of the you know like if you <laughs> steeped potpourri, you know, like tea. It's not like a tea quality to it. Um, it's really nice. I'm actually it's really good. I'm really yeah. a fan. It's more fruity than I thought it would be. Yeah, and I, I I like that. All right, what else we got? Moving right along. I'm really Moving surprised right. actually that you it. didn't open this up for Valentine's Day. Because <laughs> it's got sort of the roses are red, violets are blue. Yeah. I, I would love it if it was a part of a series, maybe too, from High Water. That I wonder if cool. that's the case. Like, like a duel, yeah. Sort of like a, a rose water style, like sour, golden sour sort of situation. That'd be pretty neat. Did you open a beer on Valentine's Day? Anyone? Oh, this Jason? Is, Kyle? This no. is bottle on. Oh, uh, I didn't open no. anything special. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I had some Sierra Nevada. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I think I, I, think I had some. Uh, like the brute from Beechwood? Did you bone your lady? Like with Whoa. the beer? With your penis. <laughs> <laughs> John's had enough uh, now where he's just like... The sensors have come off. You guys go fuck though? <laughs> Did you fuck? <laughs> no, really good beer. That was that was excellent. That was uh, better than I expected. I'm trying to change the thing here. Dip, dip, dip. So next up is a beer that we've had before on the show. We had it actually uh, fresh from Almanac. They sent us uh, this beer uh, along with their red wine barrel aged version. Um, this is uh, from 2016. This is their uh, one of their anniversary beers. It's their Farmers Reserve Grand Cru. Uh, it, it to describe the label on this beer, it's it's a it's a silk screened like 750 bottle. And it's basically like this infinity infinity label that's like printed all the way around. It's so fucking cool. And I remember the first time I saw this, uh, I think I was at JBF in 2016. 
and that's when Cerebral Brewing was just about to open, and uh, <laughs> we went there to check it out, and um, Jesse showed up, and he had a bottle of this, and I was like, what the fuck is that label, dude? He's like, I know, right? Yeah. And I'm like, that is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. How did you do that? This, and, this picture, is this is the one that you have printed in the studio? Did you do that? Yeah, that's my photo. It's so good. And I sent him that, like, this is from, uh, what's that? They advertise on ATP. Uh, Oh God! Oh, uh, yeah, fracture, fracture. That's yeah, a fracture that's a fracture thing. So yeah. I ordered two, and I had one sent to Jesse and one sent that's to me. So good, but um, yeah, I was just like enamored with this 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 bottle. As someone who buys beer specifically based off of what the label looks like, this is high on the list. Oh, well, don't we all? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the most important parts of purchasing beer is how it looks. Yeah. So I don't even remember where this came from. Have you guys seen <laughs> another one that was like, I don't it know may where have come from Almanac. <laughs> have you seen the crazy labels they're doing on the, um, we had them on the show, the brewery West cans. Oh God. Oh, yeah. those are nuts. They I, have these I, like multi-layered okay. die cut labels. I, I've been down there and like, I want to, I want to figure out how to go yeah. talk to those guys because I want to know how they do that. Because I have Vito's number. I'll give you his number. I, I know. Well, I've, I'm follow him on um, Instagram. He's replied to my shit. So oh, I got yeah, to hit him guy. up. He'll talk to you about anything you want. Okay. Because I like, I want to know the technical production of that because there's no way nobody's doing it by hand. So it's like, is it like uh, a, it's yeah. a, wait, no, they're not sticking those on by well, hand. Well, no, they, I think they, they it's do a reverse. A first, like you, it's a, it's a backward stick. And I assume they put it on and then peel off the top layer. It's, it's basically a print that's on like a, you know, like, like you get a vinyl sticker that you put on your windshield or yeah, whatever. Yeah, sure. And so it's all on there and that gets a first wrap and then they have to send it through again. And everything, I think from what Vito said is lined. They have to make sure everything's lined up perfectly. Yeah. So it, it'll like flow perfectly. And that second layer will get applied. Okay. Appropriately. So to your point, those, those cans, since they started doing that, I think like with, was falling water, one of the first ones. I don't, I couldn't tell you, it but like, it's been for a, Probably a year and a half now they've been doing it. Okay. It's, it's stunning. Every time I see it, I'm just like, how how technically like do you manufacture that? That's a can't like even if the beer sucks, I want the can. Oh yeah. Just because it's yeah. like a piece of art. <laughs> it looks so cool. I really enjoy when breweries use the like aluminum can as part of the mm-hmm. look. Mm-hmm. Like it's cool looking, right? Like a plain can is inherently kind of cool in like a DeLorean sort of way. And, uh, yeah, and I like when they implement that into part of the uh, label art. Yeah, it's I think a, a nice departure from sort of the vacuum form cans that are starting to get really popular too. Like a, just seeing a couple yeah, that are couple that are behind here. you. Um, it's it is very different and uh, for sure stands out. Like if you're trying to just get yeah. folks to to look at your beer on the shelf, that's the way to do it. Like oh, yeah. make the label look just. And out of out of there, you know. I got a shout out to Brewery West too. Again, their location is <sighs> amazing. Incredible. I hadn't yeah. been there, and we finally like my we decided uh, my wife and I decided to just like one day we're like, let's go down there. Like it's cool. It's like very family friendly, very like open, open, and just so much space. And we just went and hung out. Took like our kid took some Legos, and we just like went and hung out. It was just so cool. Yeah. Plus, I also like that it's one of the. It's literally one of the only breweries in the area that opens. That is just a brewery, not like a restaurant. That opens early and it's only on Fridays though. Most breweries I've noticed, like if I wanted to go say like work at a brewery for the day, they don't open till like four at the earliest. Yeah, it that seems sucks. Like. So that was like one you're of those... ready to wrap it up at four. I would think. What I was mean, that? I think you'd ready, you're ready to yeah. wrap it up at four. Yeah, exactly. Or if I, for me, like I'm in West LA, like I need to go and I need to get back. Yeah. Like, I need to be oh. home before three because like, otherwise you're, you're not, not getting home. home until midnight. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that they open at noon on like it was just super cool. I just I'm, yeah, I'm I remember, pretty stuck like, with them right now. Watching the 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 them building that place and all the crap they went through because it's such an old building and like you just can't convert a building into a brewery overnight. Like you got to basically dig up the foundation and then they ran into issues with I mean because they're like basically on the beach and like uh it was just a nightmare and i was i was there for <clears throat> just before the brewery opened when um the shelton brothers festival was there yeah oh yeah i remember that <clears throat> but i haven't been there i'm since. so sorry i missed that it was a really cool festival that sucks it, it seemed like it like it didn't do very well at all they had four sessions but from what i heard like everyone signed up for session one because they're like we don't want them to run out of beer and then like all the other sessions were like less than half full no lines like hmm. c- which is, I think, why they didn't come back to California. But. Yeah. <laughs> they moved it the next year. Anyway, uh, so this beer, again, uh, came out in 2016. Um, this is uh, made with Muscat Blanc grapes. 
um, and it's aged for over a year in French oak barrels. And, so, and aged for even for what four more in the box in my office. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, and it smells weird. Yeah, I'm, this was the one that we didn't care for. Yeah. Um, I mean, actually, it's gotten better. I think it's got like a diesely nose to it. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't get the mm. diesel. I get a burn. Maybe that's the diesel you're you're talking about. Yeah, it's it definitely has a white wine flavor. It's very white wine. Mm. Extreme. Like I took a sip and I'm like, mm, I'm getting some like white wine notes, like some some pinot or chardonnay, like white. Yeah. yeah I'm, Not that I wish I would have gone back and like listen to this episode with Jesse because he was on the show with this beer okay. um, from when he lived in San Francisco. And I, I want to say that this was like a, this was kind of like a wine beer hybrid where they had a lot of wine must in there too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong about that? I think I'm no, right. That sounds right. Um, well, for, for someone who has not really liked wine or the, the musket grape beers in the past or wines with that musk, this is actually pretty solid. I mean, I'm gonna like it. It's 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 playing on my like. I I do like um, when I go you know say like wine tasting or something. I do you do the flight and like I do enjoy a good white wine, and it's really playing into that for me. This it, for go ahead. Jay. It's hitting my off flavor buttons on the it, and on it, the nose and on the palate. It might. I would trust you. I'm. <sighs> You're the one who took the course. No, I just That's, did a seminar that was like an ad for the course, but it's like <laughs> part of it. Um, okay. Greg took the course. Greg's, I, Greg's in wine school. Do, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I mean, I'll throw it out there. I don't store my beer very well, and this has probably been hanging out in shifted offices, so who knows? Do you look at me judging you like you're mine, in a room full of beer. <laughs> yeah, mine sits on a shelf. <laughs> okay, I mean, but I mean, I, it's not. it hasn't been in a cooler. It, it's moved around a lot. Honestly, if 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 it's not seeing like... 100 degree temperatures or something like that you're fine okay it's it's gonna be fine so it, it may not have held up i can't tell you but i, I think I'm this enjoying is it. pretty good there's uh, good elements to it but i'm mm, the some, nose the nose is something that i'm like kind of about and but tasting it it's got sort of like a it's got a lightness it's got a very like fizzy texture um the i don't know i just want to keep going it's like bright there's and a, there's a very tannic character to it, which yeah. I enjoy. Yeah, um, like it, 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 it kind of almost dries out your mouth a little yeah, bit. But, yeah, for sure. Which I actually like. I generally like the tannic character in wines and beers, but um, that plus the acid is a little aggressive mm-hmm. um, okay. for me. I think the acid on this uh, compared to the last beer we had, uh, where the the bite was more on the sides of my like on my jaw, mm. um, this is on the back of my throat. Yep. I can um, taste this in the roof of my mouth. Yeah, same. <laughs> like, this it's, is hitting it's, you it's in a all way, way different. Back. It's kind of like yeah. you're, you're like. Just, I think Tim and I are kind of like in one camp, and you guys are in a different one. Interesting. Like, I think we both like it. Yeah. And you guys are just like. I think he liked it. Like taking a dunk on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's it's sort of like leaning the smell. I just for sure can't get behind. I don't I don't know what it is with the smell. Um, I mean, it smells like sticking to me. I guess I don't I don't know necessarily. I haven't been huffing diesel lately, so I'm not getting. Well, but I, a lot I, I want to. I want to. I want to smell <laughs> acid. Like I don't. I'm just smelling white. I'm smelling the the white wine grapes. Personally. And maybe that's maybe that's my personal feeling of like I just don't like wine. I'm like with, I'm just not fair. a fan. I'm with Tim on that. You know I, what? I think the note might be that fucking flavor that I, that bothers me a lot, the 40p flavor. Maybe. I think that might be what I'm getting. Wait, it's, what's it's, that? But that's a um, that's a Brett derivative and I don't think they use Brett in this beer, so maybe it's just like an off component. Uh for, yeah, 40p is like a Brett infection. It, it gets people describe it as band-aidy or um mm. for me it comes in as like a burnt rubber um uh mm. which is not usually how other people describe it. But. Sure. <laughs> I, Personally, I, I just I I still I go back to the same thing. I feel when I describe beer, I feel like a broken record. But it's it's I get like the kind of the the fruity grapey like white wine with a little bit of like a mellowed out um like the hops almost kind of coming through at the end. Anyway, yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly I what know. I think too. <laughs> it's it's that's yeah, it's uh, it's so weird that we're both in like. At- <laughs> at ten point two, though, I'm actually kind of surprised at the flavor. Where I'm not, it tastes like it could be like a five or six percent sour. For yeah, me. exactly. The the ABV um, isn't. Doesn't it's, seem to I'm be not good. getting a lot of the alcohol coming through on this, and maybe it is because of that acid that yeah. just seems to like really, really dominate. 
The one thing that I don't <clears throat> like about it is it comes off a little um, heavy, like um, syrupy, kind, not not under attenuated, uh, sugary, but just a little heavy. I wish it was more effervescent, I guess. Mm -hmm. That, could, that could probably alleviate some of the issues. Carbon, yeah, maybe. But otherwise, uh, I think it, for being, what, three years old at this point, um, it's pretty good. This was a good, this was a good, this is cool because we had this fresh and now we get to try it like, ah, with some age on it. And okay. I think I still have bottles too. I, I should felt, send you home with a red bottle too, ooh. just to see what you think about that. I felt a little, yeah, when, when you said, oh, we, when I saw the picture and I was like, oh crap, they've had that. I was trying to find things that like maybe you guys hadn't had. <laughs> And it's it, okay. There's, 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 there's so a much more. There's a challenge when coming to meet you. It's like, I no, need to find no, the no. good, <laughs> weird, interesting things. Nah, we're not that kind of yeah. thing. I know, but it's 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 an un <laughs> I get it, Tim. It's, it's an unsaid it. thing. We, we already talked, but we yeah. texted about this, so it's fine. Anyway. <laughs> you don't want to show up with like Blue Moon and be yeah. like, I heard you guys like beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Tim, we've got one more beer on the table. Do we want to open it, you guys? Or do we want to like stop now while we're... Quit while we're ahead. ahead. This, might, this one's pretty old. This right? might be an experiment. I don't know. We are. We are. Fuck pretty it. Far Open it up. Show. Who's the host? <laughs> we're all the host. Oh, okay. So the, it, was, it was Matt. Now it's just a void. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last one that I brought, just as a bonus, is a uh, Toppling Goliath. Um, it's their Double India Palo Hop Smack. I like. I said. I think I got this in one of my early Tavor shipments, and I don't know. Okay, open it up. Yeah. We're going to shock on the shit. And you're just, We're going to do it. Go for it. Here we go. It's a double IPA that is 7.8%, which is bar Ooh. barely a double IPA. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> high single. <laughs> yeah, I need to rinse. Hold on. Hmm. I mean, um, uh, Top well, Goliath IPA is a good baseline, at least. Like, they're a good IPA uh, maker. Yeah, I mean, Pseudo Sue and all that stuff, like, I remember, like, Pseudo Sue was the hot shit for a while, I think, like, a month or, like, a few months back. Yeah. Uh, it was a couple years ago, yeah. And then we got it here, and everyone's like, oh, you're not getting the real thing, because that was brewed in Florida, like, you guys suck. I had I had Pseudo Sue right. and King Sue that my buddy traded for, and, like, here's the thing. I'm going to sound like a fucking dickhead right now, but... A lot of these breweries that became hype breweries were in areas that didn't have a good selection of craft beer, and then the one good brewery in you know the whole state became like everybody's like holy shit these guys are amazing, but like for the country, yeah, they, they're not that special. Like if you lived anywhere else, but if you're in Iowa, Topping Topping Goliath is holy shit. You can't get IPA anywhere. Like when it's bit better now on the national scale but like traveling a couple years ago going other places i'm like oh you can't get good I like i was in san antonio and you can't get good i, I couldn't get good ipa anywhere mm -hmm. like the ipas i could get sucked the local ipas were all fucking garbage like it's gotten a lot better like and this is probably you know five years ago but i think Ooh. for a while um like there's just like certain beer styles were really underserved in certain regions. Also, though, like you look at the like beer tubers on YouTube that review <laughs> Toppling Goliath beers, and like they all, you know, I think they 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 would say that they're a quality craft brewery. Like, yeah, they, they're definitely really, they're, they're their solid. beers are definitely good. <laughs> this beer, it, it smells pretty. <laughs> it's old. pretty old. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, saw, I, I took a smell. I saw his face. I looked at Kyle and I watched. Him. I saw his face and I was like, "Uh oh!" I was like, "This oh, is like straight up onions, <laughs> right?" It does smell That's, like onions. It's like <laughs> onions and hot sauce. Is this like mosaic? socks. It's definitely socks. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. See, this does not get the hashtag for Team Old IPA. No, 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 no. This is exactly what Team Old IPA brought upon themselves. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it was great when it was bottled, but it's what now they it's, deserve. It's it is what it is. So, Ooh. if you want to find four brewers online, uh, <laughs> brewers.com. Uh, I'm going to stop. Thanks, Tim and Kyle, for hanging out once again for your second episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tim, thanks for the beers. I think yeah. everything you brought was really Except good. Except that last one. What's up? Except that last one. Well, that, no, that was too anyway. That was just like off the cuff. Bonus. So. But uh, <laughs> yeah, everything was pretty great. Like Yay! Uh, the Adroit like theory i'm glad i got to try their beers finally even though it was like so old in terms of ipa sure. but still so good yeah. that was very interesting so um thanks again yeah uh, thanks for having us 
So again, uh, fourbrewers.com, that's where all of, our, all of our social links are and everything for YouTube and pictures and everything else. Uh, go to support the shit out of it.com to give us your money. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at, at Four Brewers Show. If you want to hit us up on Instagram, we are at Four Brewers. Our live streams are at twitch.tv slash the number four brewers or at fourbrewers.com slash live or at fourbrewers.live. And uh, if you want to if you want to leave a review on iTunes, uh, only five star reviews are preferred. <laughs> and if you want to say something bad, hit us up at feedback at fourbrewers.com and brew the shit out of it. <laughs>